Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Jane. And I'm Mock. Oh, wait, I screwed it up. Nuts. Can we go again? <laughs> no can do. We're live. No retakes. We're what? Live. Live, live, live. We just got to roll with it. Yeah, keep up, Mork. When was this decided? Last week. Mork. Jeez. Yeah, that's right. You're Mork now. Hello. Hey. I can't we, believe it we worked. Are absolutely. Mork. Live, and only, oh, I've got watch on. <laughs> only three days late. Yeah, so. well, you know, it's as usual, fashionably late. Hi, Thank you so welcome. much for joining us. Uh, let us know how you're getting on uh, in the comments and things. Mm -hmm. How do we prove that we're live right now? Uh, we can talk about things that are literally we happening this week. Newspaper. <laughs> yeah, with, with today's data. Well, it. thank you for um, joining us for this bold, brave experiment in yeah. show of the week live on a Wednesday afternoon. Mm. Yeah. If you are in the uh, if you're in the time zone that is on the American West Coast, then it's breakfast. Yeah, we so this, is, like a this is like show. a breakfast show. Yeah. Exactly as good as real yeah. breakfast. Do you have a cup of tea. I do have a cup of tea. There you go. There you Why go. don't I have a so cup like, of tea? I don't know. Did you make one? <laughs> no. I'm making you tea. Good morning, America. <laughs> good <laughs> middle of the night, Australia. Yeah. How are you feeling about your new name, Mike? Uh, I it's mean, rubbish. Mark. I already had a new name on Outside Extra. I was Mick for a while, and that finally died down, and now this. When will you find a name you can settle on? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so <Never>. flighty. <laughs> um, yeah, my so favourite a... is Mycicle Channel. Mycicle, Mycicle, yeah. Mycicle well, Channel, channel yeah. the formal name. Yeah. Right. This is a bold new experiment in Content Horizons. Yeah. It certainly is. We thought, what if videos, but we make them as you watch them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In a kind of panicked, <laughs> frantic sort of manner. Yeah, yeah, and probably, like going forward, we won't be 15 minutes late to start. I suspect. Hey, that's a way of proving that we're live. That we know how late we are. We know how that's late we are. No, no, because literally <laughs> oh, every video true. we've ever done live has, has been, been like, 15 yeah, minutes really late. Everything, does it? Yeah. Um, so, what's everyone been up to this week? What have you been doing? Well, Mike, great question. Uh, I played some Resident Evil 3. That's cool. Yeah, we should probably talk about that. Yeah. Oh, video. yeah, we're going to be talking we're about Resident Evil 3 that. remake mm. soon ish. Got some gameplay uh, that Capcom gave us of the single player, and then we've got some actual gameplay I captured of playing the multiplayer mode Resident Evil Resistance. So you can see how good Andy is. That's right, I was not. <laughs> I was the worst mastermind out of everyone. Right? Oh no, I thought so, you'd be good at torturing the teenagers. So hi, but you've got to place, I, I'll explain this later. You All right. place oh, things oh, oh, you're going to have your laptop up. Well, like, I'll put it in the middle so everyone can see. I think um, we should ration the number of laptops on our laps, otherwise yeah, it's fine. like we're... Um, but this is how live it is. We've got a comment from uh, Kultono DK. What are your thoughts on all the cancellations of various gaming events due to the coronavirus? I think it makes sense. I know gaming events are fun. Which ones have been cancelled? Uh, a bunch of people pulled out of GDC. Mm. Uh, They've not been cancelled. Some people have been. Yeah, so, so. gaming events aren't cancelled, no. but um, a lot of people who have like staff in Asia and things like that have decided to restrict their presence at, at things like GDC and PAX East, which mm -hmm. I think is sensible. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think we're sort of. I don't want to get into the sort of specifics of epidemics and things, but I think it's safe to be cautious. It seems like a big, big deal. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm still going to C2E2. Yeah, weekend. that's fine. Oh yeah, we were just talking um, mm. about Andy going to Chicago that's tomorrow. That's what else I'm doing this week. I'm going to go to C2E2 to check <laughs> out. And C2E2 the... stands for the Chicago to Comics and Entertainment to. Expo. I think the one that Andy said. He's yeah. going to Chicago <laughs> to see comics and wrestling, and if you're going to yeah, be there, yeah, there, yeah. So look out, look out for Andy. Hit him up. Yeah, say hi. He's up for whatever. <laughs> I'll be mooching around. Here we she go. Promised. I've got the classic comment from Elias yeah. saying, "They're not live. Prove it by reading this." Prove it. He could be Prove a plant. Him. Prove. Could, could be, be a, yeah, it's could true. Be a plant. Yeah. <laughs> Jane's doing her best to disprove. Jane's myth busting this I'm entire I'm the skeptic. Like, like, they call me the skeptic. You gamer. don't believe this is life. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you see it? Okay. Um, Dave Chapman says. How do I know anything is real? <laughs> so is this just a way of avoiding editing, Andy? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, but yes, no. Right. As well. Um, well, we just thought we'd try it. Bold it's going to be a longer show. We, we're going to run for That's right. roughly yeah. an hour. So yeah. actually, you get more show. Um, uh, it, it just happens to be live. And then yeah. if you want to watch it on Friday afternoon, then fill you your boots. still do yeah. that. Yeah. So what have you guys been up to this week? Uh, what? I, After you. I've been playing Two Point Hospital, and it has been so relaxing mm. and delightful. Turns out running a hospital is really fun and easy. So uh, I, don't know, I don't know what the I'd like to take, is. Uh, take exception to that. When I ran it, it was extremely stressful and difficult. You built like a bunch it. of pointless corridors, so. Oh. So. I like it. I like putting me. pot plants in all the doctor's offices and making them happy by having pretty pot plants. It's nice. It's, it's a nice. great game. It's very soothing. Yeah. I find it very soothing as a game. Yeah. Uh, even when people are dying of like clown disease and stuff. <laughs> oh, have you got to the clown disease? Oh yeah, all yeah. kinds oh. of pan diseases, horrible, clown horrible diseases. Horrible clown diseases. Mm, mm. Mm. I've been uh, playing that. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was. I, I've been checking out the news as I tend to. Um, and uh, I noticed the whole uh, thing about Cyberpunk. Thought that was quite interesting. Did what you thing about see Cyberpunk? this news? So 
basically, if you buy Cyberpunk on Xbox One, they're guaranteeing that for no charge, it will run on Xbox Series X, kind of all upgraded and improved, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because we've been wondering about this um, new console launch and how it's going to shape up compared to previous ones. Yes. And I get the feeling it's going to be a lot more like the kind of Xbox One X launch where this, it's almost continuity. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. your games look better, yeah. basically. Um, and obviously load faster and things like that. But um, certainly, I think... Um, CD Projekt Red like to kind of do right by the fans, but I think they're also kind of forcing the hand of a lot of other sort of publishers because once they've come out and said that one of the biggest games of the year will get a free upgrade on Series X, surely all the other games are like, oh yeah, I guess we have to do it as well. All the Is other it? games are like, curse you CD yeah. Projekt Red, showing us all bit, up. A bit try hard. They're like, I, oh look what we've done everyone. I think they're very good at, at, at like accumulating goodwill. Yeah. And like auth authentically, I, th I think they're into it. They're into that okay. very like pro, like consumer stuff. Yeah. Uh, which is which is great, and it's good business as well. So um, so fair play. But yeah, I don't. I think it will not be repeated across mm. the board. It is quite a specifically like CD Projekt Red brand thing to do. The fact that they've announced it suggests they've already been told by Microsoft, you've got choices here. You yeah, can either yeah, yeah. do it this way or you can do it They're this way. They're getting out in front of it. And mm. uh, and yeah, there wouldn't be any point in announcing it if everyone was going to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. on a broader point, it's the same story with Halo 5 Infinite and all the Microsoft first party things as well. Mm. They will get a free upgrade. But what I find interesting... You'd hope this, that from first party. Yeah. Stuff, well, yeah. And particularly with how they've been behaving with Game Pass and, you know, putting stuff uh, day and day on Game Pass as yeah. well. Um, but I, I think what's interesting is that most of the Xbox exclusives, if not all of the Xbox first party exclusives, seem to be compatible with the old Xbox One as well. So, for example, Halo oh. 5 Infinite, you, if you have a regular Xbox One right now, you can play it on Xbox you'll One. Be able to play it on Xbox that. One S, so, yeah. Xbox. Uh, new Wave. Yeah. Whatever. A series X. A series yeah. X. On yeah. your yeah. PC, probably. Che as well. Wild Cherry. <laughs> yeah. Wild Cherry. Doesn't this just mean you're going to get worse? You're going to get worse versions. No, of it just means they're going to be more scalable. Yeah. They're going to be more scalable. Scalable, scalable. means worse. No, no, it means scalable. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, that and Forza 8 we're expecting. Probably you'll be able to play that on your Xbox One as well. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting announcement with like big ramifications. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Uh, I, the news story that I saw this week was that they've announced the next stage of the Star Wars mm. stories. Yes. Which is High Republic. Yeah, the High Republic, which is set during like the golden age of the oh, Jedi. Oh no, so the old Republic and, era. Uh, no, wait. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. around that time. Yeah, yeah, the, the sort the of olden old, like, days. The, the days when Jedi Knights were sort of, you know, like all, everywhere. Look at them. Yeah, yeah, look, look at, at them. These, look at these all of these Jedi Knights Jedis. and Padawans or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's got braid. That's a Padawan. All yeah. going around doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at all those lightsabers they've got. Yeah. Oh, and they, back in the day, everyone had a lightsaber. <laughs> and they, they, I think there was like leaks of this stuff before mm. it came yeah. out, and they were like, "Oh, it's going to include video games as well." And then they yeah. put this thing out. They were like, "No, no video, video games. games." Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but so after no... Jedi Fallen Order, how could you not make another Star uh, Wars yeah. video game? I guess because it's an era shift, you know, like, like it, you time might be able to reference travel. <laughs> Cal Kestis travels. Backwards in time. Did he use force time travel? Did you know that yeah, a lightsaber is so hot that it can cut through the time, the time continuum? continuum. Right. And you just step through the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you end up in the yeah. past. I suspect while we might not get games set there, we'll probably they, they're really good at that kind of interconnected universe stuff, so maybe there'll be references to it in the next Fallen Order game, which we're pretty confident is They're really out. controlling uh, about the IP. I heard that um, they weren't originally allowed to use the word Jedi in Jedi Fallen Order. They had to call everyone Force users until like Disney eventually relented. Yeah. That sounds apocryphal. That's right. Is that really it was an interview true? With, uh, yeah, it was an interview with the guy from Respawn. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Seems weird. Yeah, anyway, cool. I think they're pretty good about making sure that things interconnect and stuff. So while we yeah. probably won't see a High Republic game, Anytime soon, um, we probably will get little references to characters, mm. maybe in things in audio logs, probably. Yeah. Little, okay. little touches. Little okay. touches. Don't um, mind me. I'm just going to for all the people who haven't noticed that we're live streaming. Yeah. Mm. Not you guys. You're all here. Yeah. And we're very grateful. But you just for the cool. people who aren't here, I'm just going to do a little tweet and maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll go. We've got one more. One more piece of news okay. that we go wanted to show the clip of. I saw this. Um, on a website, there's um, murderers in Red Dead Redemption 2 now. <gasps> oh, seen this. yes! Have you heard this about this? This was like on Kotaku like three or four days ago. So, in Red Dead Online, there's an NPC. It's just Red Dead single player, it's not even oh, online. Single player. single player, that's what makes it even weirder. Okay, so Arthur Morgan is having a, a little tiff with someone in Rhodes. Right. And this other NPC, unrelated NPC, who's walking <laughs> down the street out of nowhere, yeah. turns around like he's suddenly got an idea, <laughs> comes charging towards this other NPC that's having a go at Arthur Morgan, right. pauses, 
and then knifes him. Like right whoa. in the neck, just right randomly. in the neck. He's West. Uh, we do have a clip of this, but Luke is talking to John, so I don't know if he's. You can see the exact moment to... where he realizes he's a sentient NPC and he can murder things. It was only yeah. a matter of time before Rockstar Games mm. gained sentience. It would be a Rockstar. Here we go. Here's oh, here we go. So look at the guy at the end of the street. The end, yeah. of, the end of the street. Any second now. Oh, so the guy in the foreground, he's about to have a start on Arthur Morgan. And look, look, here he comes. Here he comes sprinting he comes. towards him. And he's like, I'll save you, Arthur Morgan. I'm Westworlding. And this and is just a computer controlled NPC. And he's got no no trouble with Arthur. He's yeah. just like, he's like how do you find him? This is from um, YouTube channel D Marlow 310, by the way, if yes. you want to see the uh, Thank you. if you want to see the video. Thank Check you. Check that out. D Marlow 310. Um, but yeah. yeah, that was full Westworld. Westworld on. is happening. Yeah. In Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. You too. saw it here for, that was the Skynet moment. That mm. was when video game characters became sentient and yeah. murderous. Probably right now in Rockstar's HQ, they've got that the NPC and it's like it's naked on a chair and they're like, Why, why did you do that? And We've got to restart like, it. Doesn't yeah. look like anything. <laughs> and that's what's yeah, yep. that's what's happening there. That's it. Uh, I've got a few comments. Uh, Amy Child Game Alive says Jane should be a Resident Evil 3 remake DLC character. Yeah, get on it, Cap Capcom. Can, can like, I be Nemesis? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so why can't I be a ca character? I could, I could have Carlos's hair. Thank you. I, I appreciate that comment. I would love to be a Resident Evil character. Uh, Zanzibar White uh, gives us the, the positive reinforcement we need. It uh, says, live video. What an ambitious concept. Honestly, this is very cool. Hope it continues from here. Well, yeah, yeah. we hope so too. See how, how it goes. <laughs> we hope it doesn't crash and burn. You come back next yeah. week and it's like everything's been closed down and deleted. This yeah. channel was never here. Yeah, we're Forget all everything fabulously saw. embarrassed by it all. Yeah. Uh, Josh Pierini donates very generously. Thank you. And says, hey guys, for hey, Resident Josh. 3, do you think uh, it stayed faithful to the original and do you think it went more action heavy or did it manage to stay in survival horror? Well, I think we're going to get on to the Resident Evil chat in a minute. So maybe yes. hold on to that comment Absolutely. just for now. Elias says, I'm not a plant, Jane. So there you go. But Elias. what okay. would a plant say that they were I would love to believe you. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got tons of comments. We'll, we'll look through some more of these later on. But um, Okay, but do we want to start talking about Resident Evil? Should we, yes, should we, why not? Should we get on to that? Why not? Okay, Let's so um, yeah, if we're ready to move on to the next section. Are mm -hmm. you, is, that a, is that a polite way of telling Jane to leave now? No. You don't do have to I leave. Have to, you don't have to leave have now. To you, leave can, now you, can leave, you can leave while the clip is, is running, so it's not Okay, all right, on my marks. Yeah, okay. We've been bringing survivors here. Here where? My guys have converted some subway cars into a shelter. It's safe. I'm fine. Personal space. Okay, I get it. Let's go. There Hello! Lovely, handsome man. Do you see what I mean about him being like Keanu Reeves? He's even yeah. got that like, head nod like, yeah, like, thing that Keanu Reeves does. Okay, personal space, I get it. You have to explain that. Not everyone watched a video I, yesterday. In my video, I said that Carlos is now like Keanu yes. Reeves. So yeah. when this live stream is over, feel free to go back to uh, Andy's excellent video about uh, Resident Evil 3 single player, which is what we're seeing at the moment. Yes. Uh, Jill so Valentine in action. What you you're just, you've also got a multiplayer video coming up yes, as well. Yes, we're going to talk about some multiplayer as well. But this yep. is the single player mm -hmm. gameplay. So as you just saw, there's a dodge mechanic, which yes. I mean huge. Little back, little quick step. Little yeah. Back step so thing. I don't know if you remember in Resident Evil 3, the original, mm. there, well, you didn't play it, did you? I played bits of Resident okay. 3, yeah. There was a dodge mechanic, but to do it, you had to have your gun drawn and right. you had to press something at the right time and it never ever worked mm. and it was more of a shove. So this you can yeah. like you can like juke as you're running, so that's like out cool. of the way in any you, direction. Yeah, oh, you, right. you, you like hit the thing and you press the direction you want to go, um, and yeah, it's it's like way more manoeuvrable than mm. any other Resident Evil game. Although uh, I was using it, and I was just not very good at it. I think it's good, the sort of thing you need to learn the timing. Yeah, you get an instinct. Like, it's the same with anything like Jedi Fallen Order, for example. Just timing your rolls and stuff, mm -hmm. you'll get good at it. Um, this looks great. This yeah, looks I mean, really that's the sort beautiful. of the, the main thing to talk about here mm. is just how good... Because Resident Evil 2 all took place inside the police station, mm. so everything was interiors, which is fine, but then there's a lot of these big outdoor areas in Resident Evil 3 and a lot of this neon lighting and uh, like puddles and fires mm. and just the light system is amazing and everything looks great. I think that's the, the big potential for me is that seeing more of Raccoon City, because obviously, you, you You're know... You're enjoy this. <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing more of the kind of streets of Raccoon City, because you obviously get the, the classic Resi 2 sprint at the beginning of that, where yeah. you're, but then after that, you never really venture too far out of the police station or the facility. Um, there's where, a little bit where you go across the orphanage, which is yes, like I a suppose, street, yeah, yeah. but um, there's a lot more of that. What was um, Josh's question about it, if it was faithful to the original? Uh, yeah, whether it had become more combat happy, whether it was, you know. I mean, definitely, yeah, it's got. I mean, you can see there, we've mm. got like electric um, transformers now you can use to shock people. And yeah, it's got like upgradable weapons, but then again, again, the original did. I think it's 
it's just a sort of more modern version rather mm. than being less faithful. It's the game they would have made to the same principles if they were making yeah. it now. Does it feel? I mean, does it feel different from Resi Two Remake, uh, you know, other than the sort of quick step thing? No, it feels very similar. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, it's using the same engine, or as far as I'm I can amazed tell. they've turned this round in like a year. I think they must have been working on it before. Yeah, they must have had two parallel teams. But yeah, I think they probably knew Resi Two was going to do well, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty high up on the on the horror scale. I mean, mm. this this thing here, you're trying to find these um, these transformers yeah. um, to restore power. Like to Optimus something. Prime. Yes, yes, exactly. Bumblebee. <laughs> Here's Bumblebee. Optimus Prime's yeah. around the corner. But um, yeah, you're in a maze made of guts with these right. like horrible <laughs> okay. spider leech monsters coming it's at you. Silent Hilly. Yeah, yeah, it's got Silent Hill vibes, definitely. Yeah, it's. Gross. So how far into the game is this? Well, I, this is this is early. So I think. Um, uh, in the original. So they lay on the maze of guts real early in the game. Just yeah, to I, I'm not sure. Set the tone. What I mean, is they, that hanging from the roof? Oh, yeah, that's dear. one of the things. It's it's after you've met Carlos, so right. it's a little a little bit mm -hmm. of the ways in. But you're trying to. Um, oh, look, here, here he is. is. Yeah. Look at that. So then, uh, of course, the nemesis is back, uh, looking fabulous. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's quite. He's the look. sort of. You can't really see because it's so dark. But he's like wrapped in packing material. Yeah, with like, like he's caution been tape and stuff. Yeah, like you would sort of. Post the, nemesis, post the nemesis to your to your worst enemy. Yeah, it's like you would um, sort of wrap a pallet for shipping. Right. Um, and then sort of like more. All those people who gets... insist on wrapping their suitcases up before they travel. Yeah, yeah. They, they, What's that all about? <laughs> they didn't want anyone getting the into TSA, their If the TSA want to get into your suitcase, they're just going to cut that off. So as you can see, he's John agrees a total nightmare. He's got tentacles and will mm -hmm. pull you towards him. Although, I will say, he doesn't sort of, he just pulls you towards him and then just sort of stands there. So it's like, look what check I this out. Me. Yeah. Just giant long jump, oh, and then you yeah. close line from hell. So he moves quick. Oh yeah, he's an, he's an absolute nightmare. Um, so what's the best way of dealing with? That's one of the jukes there. Oh yeah, a little. Uh, I think you just got to run away from him. In the original, you could um, you could kill him in each encounter, not kill him, but mm. like incapacitate him. He would drop like weapon parts and ammo and stuff. But uh, the fact that they included him killing you in the official B-roll that yeah, Capcom provided exactly. means that they, they, you need to know he's dangerous. You yeah. need to know he's dangerous. Check him out. He just he just. Leaps just comes <laughs> at you. What I do like though is um, that he sometimes kills zombies for you if they're in his way. So mm. you can see him, him here. He does a, a charge and just absolutely owns this, <laughs> this guy in the high vis vest. So you could so technically like, like, use him as a as a bioweapon. Yeah, basically, if you get some zombies between you and him, he actually sort of. <laughs> What's that store called? Advantage. Toy Uncle. Yeah, Toy Uncle. You ever it's been to Toy Uncle? Bit of a weird name. For the shop stuff. names are really strange. Yeah. There was um, there was Moon Donut over there. In the uh, in the B roll. I don't know if we're going to see it here, we probably won't see it here, but mm. in the subway there are all these movie posters oh, on right. the, uh, the walls and they're all like got weird titles and they, it's like the Terminator and Alien yeah. stuff but with different titles. So yeah, I love right. stuff like that, it's great. Yeah, a little shtick, sort of spoof stuff. But yeah, how about this, uh, these facial animations are like genuinely really impressive. Everyone looks really yeah, good. Yeah, they've got proper, properly moving faces and stuff. Yeah, and that hair is a thing of beauty. <laughs> like shaggy cheap dog. Yeah, hair, yeah, like the Dulux dog. I, I, I am so excited for this game. It's, it's so cool that we're getting it so soon. Like that's the, you know, that's the main thing that I, I've taken away from this. Is like, yeah, like you say, they must have known Resi 2 Remake was going to absolutely slay the charts, mm -hmm. um, and and they've got this ready to go. And like it, you were saying, it's reflective of sort of how the original Resi 3 followed up Resi 2. It was kind of quite a quick turnaround. Yeah, the original Resi 3 was just going to be a sort of like a spin-off side game, mm. um, and then. The actual Resi 3 they were making ended up taking forever, and they were like, you know what, this is Resi 3 now. You've got, <laughs> you've got two months to bulk it out to full game length. So I think, yeah. like a lot of this stuff is is quite quite new, mm. um, and I think there's going to be stuff set in the police station. Um, which, oh, right, you know, okay. they had that. They already had that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's a very it's a very short sequence in the original. Mm. Uh, Resident Evil 3, but I think they might extend that a bit for this. Um, yeah, I not? feel like it's going to be a longer game. It'd be a really good opportunity to kind of play with your expectations. Like if you play Resident Evil 2 Remake, mm. like send you back to a familiar environment, but have things slightly different they or love, changed. They or, love doing that. Like yeah. the Resident Evil 1 Remake, the bit in the first version where the dogs jump through the window. Mm. When you go into it, the dogs hit the window, but it doesn't break. Oh man. Just to sort of psych you out. Playing with your heart. All right, yeah. here's, a, here's something gross. It's the Hunter Gammas. Right. Have, um, These guys look disgusting. These kind right? of experimental half-finished oh. like frog hunters. Oh, they're just, just foul. So fleshy. They yeah. look like something that yeah has been discovered at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Yeah, or something. this is one of the worst things I've seen. <laughs> just yeah. get... Same. Yeah. Same as these. Oh. Just get folded up like a dead chair. They're really like emphasizing the uh, the deaths there on the well, I mean, official Capcom B-roll. Yeah. Yeah. Capcom really knows what the people want. <laughs> Give um, the people what they want. But yeah. So again, sewers, which never the best 
sequences in any mm. Resident Evil game. But, but better um, here than most, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think I played through the whole sewer section when I was playing, and it yeah. wasn't. It was like twenty minutes. Ah, that's not too bad. That's not bad. Yeah. What do you What do you make of Jill, like in the in the new game? How she's, she's, good, sort of she's way swearier. Really? Because, yeah, she's constantly effing and vining. Been hanging is, out with Moira Burton. Yeah, but she's she's good, and um, they uh, uh, she has the sort of back and forth with uh, Carlos, which is. She just doesn't stand for any nonsense. Good. So there's like a bit, there's a bit of fire, and, and she's like, this thing's on fire, and he's like, well, I'm sure a tall drink of water like you could put that out, <laughs> and she's like, f you, <laughs> and then just turns off the radio. So you're like, okay. Jane has a question. Yes, Jane. Repeat after me because my mic's not on. Bob C. Ca Bob P. Caramel says. Bob P. Caramel says. Any word on the DLC costumes? Any word on the DLC costumes? Did they mention that at all? Uh, they didn't mention that. I've I've only seen the. Um, uh, the original Resident Evil 3 costumes mm. that are um, the pre order ones. It's got Jill in the mini skirt and the tube top. Yeah. And it's got the original hair Carlos, which is just Ooh, not no. as good. No. It's the same face model, but with the terrible 90s curtains, and it's just, it's a no. It's, <laughs> it's a, no a no from, from Andy. It's an absolute no from me. Um, but yeah, I mean, Hopefully if it's anything, mix and match, right? Yeah. If it's anything like the Resident Evil 2, it's going to have tons of costumes. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't heard any anything apart from those ones. This is the. Um, the bit that we played up to, this is the sort of boss fight, you have right. to fight the nemesis okay. uh, on the roof of this good, building. Good grenade shot, he's, he's shrugged that off. He's got a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, he did flinch slightly at that second grenade. Yeah, you can there. sort of knock him down to, to one knee. Um, yeah, it's pretty tough. And I, was, I found um, Resi 3 so stressful. Mm. Like, just the idea that he was constantly... I mean, it was bad enough in Res, Resi 2 Remake, they kind of had the uh, Mr. X stuff. You know, he was he was kind of relentless in his pursuit. But yeah. Like it was the whole point of Resi Three, right? Yeah, yeah. He's constantly after you, and he's horrible. I was playing this at a station next to uh, Aoife from Eurogame, oh, yeah. who hadn't picked up the grenade launcher when she was playing. Oh, and I was sort of doing no. this boss battle, and I was like, oh, oh this is really hard. No. And I looked over, and she was, I was like, oh no. <laughs> nice she got him. She got him in the end. She I had that with Resident Evil Code Veronica, where I just ran out of grenade ammo, and I had to fight this guy who was like walking towards me, yeah. and I'm there with a knife. Trying to desperately stab him. But no kudos to Aoife for finishing this without the grenade launcher. Aoife's just... hardcore though, like she's hardcore Resi. Oh yeah, for sure. Resi old school fan. Uh, but yeah, that's some uh, some single player. We're going to move on to the um, the multiplayer stuff now. Has anyone in the comments got any questions about what I played? If you want to ask me anything mm. about having played it. Um, uh, but... If you played Resi too, you kind of know what to expect. Yeah. So look at him, he's dodging out the way. <laughs> that's it. That should be it. That should be allowed. This nemesis. I'm the only one who's allowed to uh, jink. Uh, Elven Ringbearer says, recovering from dental procedure, which stars member do you identify with the most? Oh, which stars member? Brad um, Wyke. Brad Wyke, because he's a coward. Yeah. Okay, well, that's... And I'm a coward, mean. yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> uh, who do I identify with? Probably Chris Redfield, because uh, I'm constantly bewildered by everything happening <laughs> in the Resident Evil games. Fair just enough. like Chris. And scared uh, of dogs as well. Yeah. Uh... Duckling Stark says you guys started live streaming in the middle of my lunch break. Now back to work. Hashtag retail for life. Love you all. Uh, we've got retail a little sticker here life. from Spiffy Mark as well. Oh, cool. Saying good luck. Nice. Thank you. All right. Well, if we bring up the uh, the Resident Evil multiplayer. Yeah, let's have a look at that. I can tell you a bit about how this works. Mm -hmm. so this is Resident Evil Resistance. This yes. is me playing as a mastermind. This is entirely new, right? This is not based on anything in a previous Resi game at all. Right? Uh, I don't think so. Yep. No, as far as I can tell. Um, so this is me playing as a mastermind. As you can see, you've got these different cards um, mm -hmm. that you can use to so at the moment I'm pressed I'm laying these leg traps um, right. but then you've got uh, things like zombies and you can get place them where you want and you switch between cameras you can see where the uh, the survivors are that guy's already wailed on my zombie <laughs> it even, he's absolutely ruined yeah absolutely ruined um so this is like five nights at freddy's but you're the baddie so, yeah sort of um you can really mess with people like so as you can see here one of them goes through, then I close and lock the door. Ah, and then the you're like zombie. desperately trying to put a zombie, I can and see. And then that. I'm like, yeah, zombie, zombie, zombie. <laughs> and I've also got a gun. What? Wait, what? You've got a little pea shooter yeah, gun? I've got a little pea shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get like buff guns to buff your zombies. I was right. playing as um, Annette Birkin. Oh, uh, okay. So you build up um, like your bioweapon, your sort of ultimate mm. as you play. And hers is um, William Birkin, who. Of course. Obviously. Call is, up the hubby. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's coming along. But um, yeah, you just you switch between the different cameras, uh, and you need to try and stop them from achieving goals. It's like activate three consoles or find okay. three key items mm -hmm. or anything like Put that. Put this chess piece um, in a hole somewhere. Basically, yeah. And the longer you play, the more things you get access to, mm -hmm. the more kind of zombies. Some of them have like 
they have all different abilities and stuff. Um, Annette is particularly good because she can put, make three dogs happen at once. So <laughs> make three yeah, dogs make three dogs happen. <laughs> That's one of the higher level powers, of course. Make dogs happen. Make dogs. She's on a terminal somewhere typing yeah. that out. It's, this is me. What taking... does accept your demise mean? I, that's just what she's saying. Oh, I see. But, yeah, but you've, taken, you've taken control I've of the zombie. Taken control of a zombie, and I'm sort of trying to figure out how it works. So when you drop in your like special, so when William Birkin shows up, do you immediately control him and then? Yes. Yeah. Well, as you as you will see when we get to that footage, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to be in direct control of William, <laughs> oh. so I put him miles away from everyone <laughs> and got confused and sort of wasted him a bit. Fair it's a shame. But yeah, it's, um, it is kind of tricky to when. Everyone's running around completing objectives, and you're like, ah, what? Uh, yeah. I found it, I found it quite panic-inducing playing as the mastermind. Right. But I think once you learn, shouldn't the maps, that be the one where you're like cool and detached? You'd and, think, wouldn't you? Yeah. But it's it's like playing as Jason in Friday the Thirteenth. Right. And if uh, everyone's just hitting you with machetes, you're like, no, yeah. I'm Jason. Stop it. I'm the I one do that's... get like. Uh, when you're like the anti-hero, like Jason. Mm. Or the get, one that's like the most powerful and is yeah. supposed to be easily killed. Yeah, right? you get performance anxiety. You're like, yeah. oh no, what if I'm not being as deadly and lethal and awful as I'm supposed to be? So here I put down my uh, G Birkin. And Absolute I'm like, oh, G. I'm, in, I'm in control. I'm nowhere near anyone. <laughs> and he also walks incredibly slowly. And can he get downstairs? No, not really. <laughs> I'm on a gantry miles away from everyone. That's amazing. You can see perhaps why I didn't do super well. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing runs on a, on a time limit. So. Okay. Uh, like the different masterminds have different abilities, um, and one of them, uh, Oswald Spencer, who's the mm -hmm. guy from Resident Evil yeah. Zero, his yeah. whole deal is about um, like stalling people and holding them in one place and running down That's the clock. That's gonna be super and, frustrating yeah, when you're playing against someone who's good at that. So this is now some survivor. gameplay of me playing as a survivor. Nice. I'm playing as um, the hacker character January Van Sant. And That's a great name. It is good. They all have great names. One of them's called Martin Sandwich. <laughs> it's a reference to yeah. the to the Jill Sandwich. Sure, sure, sure. But um, yeah, so as a hacker, she can do things like um, increase the cooldown times on the, um, the Mastermind's abilities. Yeah. She can hack the camera so they can't like, look in a particular room or place things in there. So she's actually a really, really good character. There are a couple of like tank, melee mm -hmm. characters who are all about sort of combat and damage dealing. Um, the character in the yellow hoodie, she's like the healer. Um, she's got like a first aid spray that heals everyone. And yeah. So are there any ways where the the survivors can really mess with the mastermind? Like really mess up their plans? Yeah, it's mostly the, the hacking yeah. stuff. Um, so it's predominantly tied to one character. Yeah, and uh, also like taking out their big their big bioweapons. So of if course, you yeah. it, if you use proper teamwork and set traps and use proper weapons, you can take down like a G Birkin pretty quickly yeah. if you use teamwork. So that's mm. that's kind of like the, like the tank is left for dead. If you're on your own they're real trouble, but if you all like yeah. focus your fire on them, eventually you can chip them away. That's, that's the really thing. nice balancing. I find. Yeah, that's the thing though is that because you have quite a strict time limit, mm. um, you do sometimes have to split up to get all your objectives right, completed. Right. So it's a kind of risk reward thing. Um, is it going to be those game, one of those games where it's a real pain in the bum when you're playing with randos, none of whom have voice chat on? Probably, yeah, because <laughs> everyone's just running around in like headless chickens. This level we're on, by the way, mm. um, is a sort of horror amusement park. Uh, cool. So we're currently in the Haunted Doll Factory. I'm not going to pretend I wouldn't go if there was a horror amusement park. During like. a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, it depends whether you booked your trip before or after the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, started. I mean, you don't want to lose your money, do you? No, exactly. So you've, um, I'm going to hack this camera. Oh, cool, OK. So that takes it they've out. They've turned out the lights, annoyingly, but um, they can't oh. now look in this room. Uh, yeah, so... Th this reminds me a bit of... Uh, did you ever play Zombie U on the Wii U? Yes. It had a kind of multiplayer mode where, because it had the separate display, it had a local multiplayer mode where one person could be on a controller on the TV, yeah. like being a survivor, and the other person was, yeah, like a mastermind, kind of placing zombies on the Wii U gamepad. Yeah. Um, so it's quite nice to see that sort of... I love, I love a good asymmetrical like multiplayer mode at the best of times, and this one looks fun. I'll be really interested to see what the uptake is on it. Yeah, I, I feel like it's one of those things that might have like a ton of people in the servers immediately around the game, but then might not have the longevity. I think anything that requires this much like learning and, and sort of mastery of specific techniques mm. can sometimes end up just dropping off like quite quickly. Yeah, it has a progression system as well. So if you come to it later than everyone else and everyone's a super high level with all these abilities, it might be sort of off-putting. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But um, I think it's going to be a fun one to stream if we're in a team together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we should totally do that. Um, Harry GTT says, can't wait for the Thomas the Tank nemesis. That will almost certainly happen. Oh man, yeah, the mods, <laughs> the mods are going to be something. Uh, and Annika Brock says, I'm glad for these remakes because the first console my family could afford was a GameCube, so I missed a lot of classic stuff. Ah, but, but you could get the cool Resident, Resident Evil, Evil games. Yeah, yeah, the Resident the GameCube, Evil. That's why I got a GameCube. Was I was, yeah, I was tempted to buy a GameCube specifically for a Resident Evil remake. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, it says uh, they seem to be a good place with balancing original content versus updates too. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think these remakes. I think the first one, you know, Resi Two remake has, has proven that they just have a real eye for what, like, modernising old mechanics and mm. what was what made the games good initially and what to kind of build on. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely true. So did you, you you played you did quite badly? Did you manage to survive as a survivor? Uh, the only game where the survivors won during our play session was the one where I was the mastermind. <laughs> right. Uh, every other game, the mastermind won. But I think that was because none of us had played it before. Yeah. And in that um, situation, generally the mastermind will have the uh, will have the, the advantage. Hand, yeah. I took, to be fair, I did nearly get them when I was playing extremely poorly. <laughs> fair enough. Um, well, that's good. It's good for me to know that because I will also be playing extremely poorly. Yeah. Oh, here's a question. Yes. Um, is it scary in multiplayer? Because I find often when you get a kind of multiplayer horror game, like the fear kind of disappears and you become completely focused on your objective. Yeah, I don't think it's like, as, it's more just a bit sort of frantic and stressful. Yeah. Um, got into overtime here. What, one feature that it has that I really like is it's got a thing called broadcast mode where um, usually when you're playing, the mastermind has these voice lines when you do things. It's like you collect yeah. a key and it's like, oh, you have a key, but one key will not be enough to save you from the machinations and all that stuff. So that would be Oswald. Spencer yeah, or... someone like that, for example. But you, if you press broadcast mode, then you get to do all that yourself. So you're on voice chat and you can... Doing the creepy voice. Yeah, you thing. can do the... You can you're mine. Stuff that will basically come through the levels, like speakers. That's hilarious. Does it have a little tinny speakery effect? Uh, that would be so good if it I sounds like it's literally being... I don't know. We didn't we didn't use it while we were playing. I just saw it in the menu. But I think it's, it's, a great, great it's a great idea. It reminds me of, like, talking of, like, novel voice chat, like, multiplayer things. Do you remember in... Um, I think it was Splinter Cell Chaos Theory and maybe Pandora Tomorrow, where when you grabbed someone from behind, you immediately got like a direct voice chat to them as if you were like... Oh, really? To... <laughs> so before, when you were a <laughs> spy, amazing. it was Spies versus Mercs, and when you were a spy, you grabbed someone and you could be like, sucks to be you, and then like yeah. break their neck. Uh, it's a really neat idea. Oh, wow, okay. I love all that stuff that's kind of imaginative uses of, uh, of voice chat. Yeah, but it, you can really like do your own sort of Resident Evil villain monologue, mm. which, uh, which I really like. Um, yeah, so anything else in the chat about Resident Evil uh, multiplayer? Uh, Tom Sidington says, wish I could watch this in full. If this comment gets read out, it's the first time I've had one read out on Show of the Week. My question is, you guys posted a lot about Sonic IRL roleplay meetings. What's that about? Sonic? Oh, I think that's just the joke poster in the office. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. There is that, yeah. yeah that I think poster. that's a joke, Tom. Uh, someone's put it up in the office. Um, and we see it every time we, we go see to the it, lift. And it's very, it's very strange. <laughs> we'll post a picture on Twitter later so people know what we're talking about. Uh, hey, everyone wants to know if you're going to be sharing your tips with the Critical Role cast at C2E2. Oh, yeah, I can tell them how to uh, play D&D &D properly. Mm. But shout a lot. Yeah, and, and, and don't read the rules. Mm, how many rings are they wearing? It's probably not enough. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Anyway, yes. Okay. It would be cool to uh, chat to those guys. Yeah, it would be really nice to meet them. They're mm. very, very good at what they do. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah, so we're about to lose this game. As you can see, we've got 54 seconds left. Right. We haven't destroyed what any of the bio cores, which is our uh, objective uh, okay. up there. Okay. We've got into the sort of like streets of Victorian London section of this horror museum. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So the, the, uh, just to talk about that for a moment, the, the settings are quite Jack diverse. Rip, they're not just a statue here. Yeah. They're not. Um, they're not all ripped from the single player game. Oh, no, I don't think maps. any of them are from yeah. the single player game. Um, yeah, the ones that we played, there was like um, a sort of warehouse uh, city thing. Uh, there was this, and then there was, well, it was a casino. Oh, yeah. nice. Is that which like is, a brightly lit environment? Is yeah, that kind it's of, very neon -y, Which is very purpley. not zombies. As you can see, I'm just getting absolutely wrecked <laughs> by G. Birkin now. In overtime. And overtime, and we're losing all the time, and there we go, we're done. So that was another wow. one of my many successes. In Resident Evil right. Resistance. Well, I wouldn't um, have done any better, so I wouldn't feel too bad about it. Yeah, that's fair. Well, so yeah, that was Resident Evil Resistance and Resident Evil 3, mm. which I personally am extremely excited about. Let us know if you're excited for that in the comments. Um, and speaking of comments, what do yeah. you say? I should we probably read get out of here. Some comments. Or well, do I have to stay? Yeah, I think you do. I stay for everything. I'm live for the whole time. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah, a ton of upgrades. Oh, Resident <laughs> Evil 3, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you see the, the Nemesis these days. That shiny trench coat and the snatched waist. And 
So don't even mention the nose. What's that about? Yeah, see, we, nose. see we took different things from the, the gameplay done. there. No, uh, I guess so. But tell me this, do you think I could pull off a flamethrower? Okay, how about in instead of, of that, we do some YouTube comments? Fine, like but we're, we're coming back to the flamethrower. All right. Just put a pin in it for now. Put a pin in the flamethrower. Yeah. Okay. You've caught an enemy unawares. Their back is turned and they're none the wiser as to your presence. You glide up behind them, utter a pithy quip, and then drop into a full crouch because the game you're playing has decided that clicking in the right stick makes you crouch for some reason, even though I thought we all agreed that right stick was Malay. Now a swatter has a real weapon. Well, Jane, that was a clip from our recent video about the things that all games need to agree on. I know. But, yeah, I, I'm just... <laughs> For no, the sake sorry. of right, for, for the, the sake of the viewers the presentation at home, I'm just that clip just yeah, there. exactly. They're, they're just like, that was a do good video. Do you remember you it? See it? Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, did it's you good. have any ones that didn't make it into the video? Uh, no, most of my, my one my one main thing is about the button to get into cars. Mm. That's the one they really can't seem to settle on a single button for. <laughs> do you know what um, would be the best thing in the world? What? Is if the four button, the face buttons on every controller from every console were just the same. None, none of this triangle, X, whoa, whoa, Y, whoa. A, hold, hold circle. Up. Like, and Nintendo uses the gonna, same letters as Xbox, but they're in a different configuration. How are you going to unify the platform holders and make them all use the same face buttons, Andy? We'll, we'll just get together and <laughs> thrash it out over dinner. Yeah, 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 and then we'll solve world peace. Yeah, we'll go out in with- In the afternoon. Um, we'll go out with Bill Gates and, um, Whoever this is busy these days. I think he's doing something and else. Whoever's the present Jack Cretton. He's too busy for, for console face buttons. We'll go out, we'll have some karaoke and some drinks, uh -huh. and then at the end of the night we'll say, come on, fellas. Okay, if you if you believe it can be done, Andy, then I'm with you. If you believe it, okay. you can we can dream it. it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, okay, so let's get to the first comment Comments! on this. Yay! It's uh, just like a normal show of the week. Yeah, so Stormgout says, I love how this list feels so off script, like they're all just going off about their pent-up anger towards video game controls. Mm, it very much came from a place of anger. Yeah, anger like and so frustration, much fury. <laughs> Hungry. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, that's how, that was the writing process. We just sat down and went... What, what bugs what, you about controls? Yeah, what would be good in to... In games, yeah. yeah stabbing, uh, the melee action versus, you know, throwing a grenade or crouching or what was what Fallout 4 thinking making crouch right stick clicking. Fallout 4 was thinking we're Fallout and we'll do whatever we bloody well please it was left stick in Fallout 3 well, why would they just like no, they're just trying to keep you on your toes Andy they're, they're not, to keep I'm not on fresh. my toes I'm trying keep to crouch keep relationship spicy the opposite your relationship What's wrong with my relationship? It's spicy. The, the spark is gone. It's not gone. Sometimes we have to surprise you and change the melee <laughs> change button. Change it up. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, on to the next comment. This is a good. This is a good one. Okay. Daniel Savage says, "My favorite game to play is where are the subtitle options? Ooh, good Gameplay, one. display, audio. audio. Who knows? It's a bit like Fun invert look, family. isn't it? Because it makes sense being in all of those." I mean, it certainly makes sense being in display because yeah. it's displayed on screen. It makes sense being in options because it's an option. Yeah, gameplay because it game affects the game. I mean, everything affects gameplay, kind of. Visuals, so yeah, there's so many places screen, you can hide the subtitle language, options. Settings. Oh yeah, there might be a dedicated sub menu. Though that and invert look, they just they should just be just main figure menu it options. out someone. Yeah, please. Or add another button to the controller. Just a whole button that's yeah. like invert look, and then another whole button that is like subtitle. Or a separate controller that's just for that. Are you talking about a keyboard? No. Have you reinvented I'm the keyboard? I'm talking about a two bu button, you know, that's like an old Atari joystick. You just with two <laughs> described buttons. a mouse. No, 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 it's got a joystick as well. Oh, okay, all right, fine. And you bring it up and you yeah. press the invert button. And then okay. you press the subtitles on button. Isn't the problem that there are, the there are so many genres of games and they each need to prioritise different kinds of control? How many genres of games are there? It's like two. <sighs> Shooters and jumpers. <laughs> and drivers. Oh, okay. Shooters three. and jumpers Shooters and, and jumpers drivers. And drivers. The three Thank kinds. You. Yeah, okay. Might, we couldn't let that go. Yeah, yeah. So we need three control schemes. Three control schemes. Well, there you go. They can't all be the same. Oh, but what about Grand Theft Auto where you shoot and jump and drive? It's a rare hybrid. A red hybrid. All right, we'll just it. agree no more Grand Theft Auto no games. So then the system will work <laughs> and it'll be fine. Oh, I don't know. How, I mean, Mr. Hauser, he's he's out of the game now, right? Literally. So maybe there won't be. Yeah, maybe. Do we know? What about Who's going to carry the GTA torch now that one of the Hausers is out of the game? Um, I don't know. 
Someone will do it. Someone will make it. Someone will want to do that. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. You've not seen the last of Grand Theft Auto. They'll find a way. Make Sleeping Dogs 2 and then everyone's there. What if Sleeping Dogs 2 could be on the Xbox One series, next console, Xbox, new Xbox? Yes, please. Sleeping Dogs 2. Sleeping Dogs 2 was, was blooming good. And I only just thought about it recently because it was in that feature, that the video that we just played, um, about car, getting into cars. Because yes, you Sleeping get Dogs into cars in it a lot. It is good. You never play Sleeping I don't know how we got onto this, but Sleeping Dogs is great and you should play it. Someone tweeted an old clip of yours recently, a Sleeping Dogs clip. And it's um, the one where you enter a cutscene where you're talking to all your criminal gang friends mm -hmm. and they're like, we think you're a plant, we think you're a secret cop, but you've gone into the cutscene wearing a police uniform. Oh yeah, it was one of the DLC costumes. Yeah, 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 it was like it a, was police, a Hong, Hong Kong, Kong police, police uniform. uniform. And they're like, there's something fishy they're about like, you. one of these guys is a cop. <laughs> you're, like, you're there in your uniform and there's this anyway, other guy. Who's some uh, Sleepy Dogs fan account just retweeted that good. recently and I thought it was good. It good. reminded me of how good that game was. We're doing this or we're going to the next one? Okay, let's, uh, let's have the next... Uh, the next comment. Oh, this comment. Now, this is a good one. Do you want That was before the rise of crowdfunding, which allowed game creators to go straight to the fans to fund the development of their game and led to some huge success stories and enormous sums of money being raised. But with more and more people getting in on the crowdfunding action, game makers had to get creative with their rewards. The reward of simply receiving a copy of the game wasn't going to cut it in a crowded marketplace, which is how we ended up with the following bizarre rewards for kickstarting games. Enjoy! So Jane, that was a clip from our video about the Kickstarter rewards. Your video, almost entirely Andy's video about bizarre Kickstarter rewards. Do you remember yeah. when Kickstarters were just kicking off all over? I do. I um, remember the Double Fine Adventure one that became Broken Age. I, I kickstarted that I one kickstarted because it. it was so early. You're like, well, yeah. I'm sure only three or four Kickstarters will ever happen. And yeah. I got some money. And if then, only we'd known, then you could have saved your money and kickstarted one of the other million kickstarters. Tim Jafer had three million dollars. Yeah. Now, there is a comment, actually, that I bypassed there that I, oh, okay. I meant to read out. We don't have a card for it because it's a late entry, but it's such a good comment for the last video that I want to share it with you. Okay. And it's from Frankie it. A. Okay, Frankie A says, and there's not going to be re re reading to, we'll to writing to read, so you're going to have it. to mind read it. Yeah. Uh, Frankie A says, RE mapping controls, one of the best worst moments I've had in a game recently was when I switched straight from Red Dead Redemption 2 to The Witcher 3. Uh-oh, you're thinking, right? I'm thinking that. Loaded into a game in the centre of Novigrad, immediately tried to mount Roach, hit the RDR2 button for get on horse, and then watched in utter disbelief as Geralt pivoted on the spot and sliced a guard's head clean off his shoulders. I quietly turned my Xbox off and went to think about what I had done. Yeah. Now that's happen. a solid gold comment. I couldn't go without reading that, Frankie A. <laughs> eh? That is horrifying. Yeah. And I can actually, I think I would do it the other way. You know, where you just you accidentally tackle someone to the ground as I after more, and you just like, a lot. and then you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but instead of getting off them. You just start waving them in their face, them in the and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. and then the police come no. over, and then you like tr try and like, yeah, yeah. try and de-escalate de the situation, shoot them all. and then accidentally draw a pistol and yeah. shoot them seven times. I'm trying to play like high on Arthur Morgan, and he's just westworlding it hard, just Absolutely. westworlding straight into those cops. But yeah, getting on to the, uh, the yes, Kickstarter. The Kickstarter video, yes. The comments. Should we yeah. get the first comment for the Kickstarter? Yes, we should. Video, we should get that up. Video. So it's from Mario Kart TV. Okay. And they say, what about wonderful 101s get blocked on Twitter? by Hideki Kamiya reward. That one's happening right now, but it's still very strange. Mm. So the you wonderful mentioned that one to me. You uh, described yeah, it. Yeah. It's getting, uh, I think they want to port it to, uh, to modern consoles. We've got some footage here of um, Hideki Kamiya's pitch video. Right, and he's is, like, I will block you on Twitter if you pay me this much money yeah, for well, my Yeah, they, well, they put together this um, this pitch video mm. for the uh, the wonderful 101 port Kickstarter. Yes. And it's got uh, Kamiya in his office. And there's mm -hmm. some kind of monster there. Um, Sounds weird. Yeah, I mean, it's very strange. The thing is, though, I, as I understand it, you can get blocked by uh, Kamiya-san pretty easily just by maybe being, he's, maybe being he's rude or annoying on Twitter. Maybe he's rode back on that. John, do you have that clip? It'd be good to see. It's. It, it may it may not happen. It may not happen. It may not if happen. If it doesn't happen... It was another late entrance. It's, yeah, it's true. Um, for this week's show. But yeah, so uh, he does block people a lot on Twitter. Yeah, because right. Because he's got a very short For free, temper, and you don't even have to kickstart a game that he's trying to make. Maybe because he's doing this Kickstarter, he he'll, stopped blocking people. He'll stop blocking people. Because it's now so like... So you, now you can be annoying to Hideki... Uh, <laughs> to, let's to find out right now. On, on, oh, you're going to tweet at him right now. No, I'm going to find out how much it is to get blocked. if he blocks you. Okay, right, find out how much it costs, and then we'll see how much money we can save by just being annoying. Yeah, exactly. On Twitter? Is that a thing you can do? 
What, get... Are you allowed to be annoying on Twitter? Well, they've made $1.3 million of their $37,000 goal. So They're many doing people all right. blocked on Twitter. It's clearly blocked. Does it say how many people paid for the tier where you, block, where you get blocked? Uh, let's have a look. So, so, so what tier so, is it? How much does it cost? Uh, Can't believe you didn't research this beforehand. I'm going to. There we oh, go. Get we blocked go. on Twitter by Camille. Twenty-seven thousand yen. Right? right, that's yen. That is yen. yen. Let's right, convert okay. that. Okay, good. Oh, now we have to do a live I conversion. Do I'm doing it right now, Mike. I've done it. Two. It's 190 pounds. 190 pounds to get blocked. To get blocked on Twitter by Hideki I tell you Kimiya. what, I will block you, Andy, for a mere hundred pounds. Block me. <laughs> do Why would you block me? Because I don't know. People What's are obviously into it. So. Yeah. Well, I wish I could have shown you this clip of Camille because he oh. fights a monster in his office and it's really oh, it's right. fun. Oh. But, um, well, we'll share it later. We'll put it in the, the yeah, description. Yeah, exactly. we'll, we'll link it. We'll put it in a card. When this show goes up live on demand, there'll be a card, be a card. and you'll be able to click on it and see the thing that Andy's talking about, but what don't do you, go away. What do you think the top tier reward is? Let's the top tier reward? Uh, you get to go for dinner uh, with him. With Hideki Camille. Yeah. Do you? No, Do you? that's usually the top tier reward. You get an acrylic standee oh. and a sticker set. Is it a life-size acrylic standee? Because um, if not, I'm out. A thank you. No. This is outrageous. No. Uh, all right, fine. Oh, well, fine. 200,000 yen. Yeah. Oh, you get a jacket. That's, that's pretty all right. good. It's all right. Wonder red replica jacket. Okay, if you were kickstarting a thing mm -hmm. and the upper tier was to, uh, an Andy experience, what would it be? Uh, you get blocked on Twitter by Andy. Okay. <laughs> no? All right. Um, but it would be like uh, you get to go um, for like an Andy uh, day out in London where yeah. we go out and we do oh, all and you my, show them the sites, my cool Andy things that I do around London. And you take them to Highgate Cemetery and you yeah. get all spooky at them. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. People would pay for that. I feel yeah. like people would pay for that. Go to um, the coffee place I like. The transient one in the comments, yeah. a, a callback to a few minutes ago, says, did Andy just announce a plan to seduce Bill Gates? No, I'm just going to take That's him out for dinner. That's not how I remember And it. get him to... Um, Agree to put the face buttons like the PlayStation face Yeah, buttons. exactly. Exactly. And he'll be like, I no longer work on, on Xbox. It's like, I don't... You, I'm no longer involved in the I'm trying to, to I'm trying to end malaria, Andy. Please leave me alone. Well, well. Uh, okay, let's um, move on to the next comment. Okay, next comment. Okay, the Read next it. comment is from Tatcom Control, okay. who says, people like to forget that Garriott was the first private citizen to go into space, and his MMORPG Tabula Rasa got cancelled while he was up on the space <laughs> yeah. station and couldn't say no. That was the plan all along. They're yeah. like, we can't cancel this. Garriott is too powerful. Yeah. We simply can't cancel it unless He's in space. That's not technically what but happened. But his powers can't reach us. What actually happened? All right, tell us the story. He tell us in, the true history. He was in quarantine after coming back from space. In case he brought back a spawn. In Russia. In right. case he brought back a, a venom symbiote. Yeah. Yeah. And while that was happening, he was forced out of his company. Oh, um, that's quite sad, actually. And yeah, I think that they... I feel bad um, about joking. Well, I mean, he got... $27 million in a lawsuit. Oh, I feel less afterwards. bad about joking now. So, um, yeah, I think we it's have a... real a, emotional roller coaster for me. We have a clip here oh. of uh, Richard Garriott in space. Okay. Um, which, there he is. Ah, there he is, old I'm Richard having Garriott. a wonderful time. He's knocking some... Um, oh, yeah, he's doing a Newton's Cradle in space. Tennis balls back yeah. and forth. It's a Newton's Cradle, Andy. I mean, they really had to, to send someone into space to... to he just wanted to be in space. There are, there are way worse things to spend all your money on. Do you know how much money he paid to go into space? Millions, I assume. Do you know how many millions? No. 30. It's good. 30 million. It's good. It's a bargain. And then he, <laughs> then he kick-started his next game, so he's like, I can't afford oh, to no, you're my right. next game. Oh, Could yeah. I have money, No, there's please? that ro roller coaster of emotions again. I'm angry now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm furious. So, Richard Garriott, he was the, mm. um, the guy who made Ultima. Yes. And he was kick-starting a, a game. In, yeah, Lord British. Mm -hmm. Do you know his dad was an astronaut? Yes. Well, Owen, I, yes, Owen I Garriott. did. I did. He was on yeah. Skylab 3 in the 70s. So I guess it's like it was like in the family, it's like the family business. Yeah, it's like the family business. He, want, he was like the second ever and his second dad generation was like, astronaut. Son, you'll be an astronaut like me. And he's like, no, Dad, I want to make video games. And he's like, now I can afford now to I... just pay to be an astronaut. Yeah. So <laughs> who's like the that, real son? His dad's like in the air force and like studying all this electrical engineering <laughs> yeah. and going through all this. Had to do boot camp yeah. and yeah. All and that. he's like, I've got thirty million dollars. Just paid for it. Yeah. Turns out you can pay for things. But yeah, that's pretty cool. $30 yeah. million to throw yeah. space balls around. Oh man, I would I do it if I had the money? Mm. I feel like it's... Uh, I'd like to go. I feel like it's morally <gasps> irresponsible to spend $30 oh, million dollars on oh, you Oh, Andy bringing the ethics. I'm just saying if you have $30 million and you can either 
have an amazing week holiday in space. This is my shot Pikachu face. <laughs> or fund like a hundred no. hospitals. Oh, you're probably right. <laughs> or put it into like climate Gee, change research or something. I just you feel can like research the climate from space. Mm. Yeah. I'm only angry because you're probably right, Andy. Yeah. I'm only angry because you, you've got the moral high ground, and now, like Obi Wan, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna dice me up. I feel like you can only do that if you're willing to put the same amount of money into. Okay, so if courses. I if I spent thirty, if I, I have to make sixty mil, yeah, so I can spend thirty mil on going to space, and 30 but also million. thirty mil on solving solving problems. problems. Solving problems. All right, people. deal. All okay, right, deal. Fine. All sixty. Right. I'm on it. Sixty All right. million. Okay, let's move All on right. to our <laughs> next video. Okay, next video is when you're fighting the bosses. You get these uh, hair attacks that Bayonetta uses because oh, yeah. her magic is very based around her hair. Her magic she's wearing a cat suit made of, hair. made of her own hair. Mm. And when you get to the sort of the, uh, they call them like the climax moments in these boss fights, you will press a button combo. Her cat suit will disappear because she needs all her hair. Yeah. And then it'll become like a giant hair fist mm. that will punch the boss in the face mm -hmm. or a big like foot or she'll turn into a hair panther. So that was last week's show of the week when we it talked was. about Bayonetta. We were here. Yeah. This on this very, very sofa. This very sofa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the clip that we just showed there, yes. you may have noticed that uh, Bayonetta was playing and I didn't have the controller Well, there's a hand. comment to this point, isn't there? There is, wanna, yeah, so let's read it. Do you want to read the comment? Yeah, so it's from Matt D. It says, it blew my mind when Andy let go of the controller to explain something and Bayonetta just kept going. Two things. Okay, so you, you edited this bit, so two, I, two, I'm, two I'm intrigued to know what was two happening things. myself. Two things. One. Bayonetta is magical and she can do whatever she wants. That is not the explanation I was expecting. <laughs> uh, two, uh, I did edit that video and um, so the reason you took your hand off the, mostly Andy's playing the game live, but then um, there, there was a cutscene and you sort of like take your one hand off the controller to talk through the cutscene. Mm -hmm. But I took the cutscene out of that video because it's quite confusing to have um, a character's face all up in the camera talking and subtitles and also Andy's talking. So I kind of shifted the timeline so there was more gameplay while you were talking. Right. And so for that, I don't know, 20 seconds or something, the um, the picture in picture, the little video uh, with Andy holding the controller and the gameplay are not synced up. And so that's why for that brief period, you're like waving the controller around. <laughs> and the game's playing itself. Well, I wanted, to, I mostly wanted to make it look like you are a fake gamer and never really play games, so. Well, mission accomplished, because <laughs> no, that was no, one of the nicer comments. No. Andy, Andy <laughs> did, well, he was playing it the whole time. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have thought about it, but um, I, I wanted to show more gameplay rather yeah, than sense. a kind of irrelevant cutscene. Because mm. cutscenes, um, it's not. It's a bit dissonant to like see people in a picture in picture and then a large cutscene, and you can't have the volume up because then it's just two people talking over each other. Yeah, so, no, I know what you mean. You just had some people why. in the comments who were like, "Explanation." This proves that they never played the game. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, but, but you, you're literally, you're clearly playing it for like ninety percent of the time, and fake then there's game. like a few seconds where it goes out of sync. Absolute fake. Game. Oh well, I should have thought of <laughs> I don't that. Think we're even I? live right now. <gasps> yeah. What if we're not even live uh, right now? What if this isn't even a real studio? Oh. What if this building isn't real? What if I see the colour green, but you see the colour <laughs> purple? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you, is this oh, the outside no. extra sofa? Oh, dear. OK, we're All like right. first year philosophy student oh right now. God. Yeah. OK, let's have the, the last comment here. Uh -huh. uh, it's from Steel Fist, which is a okay. pretty, pretty cool name. Brutal. Uh, 1544 reminds me of a certain minor character in Curse of Monkey Island. Okay. This is when we were talking about Murphy beds. There is a clip for this. Yes, so there is. So, if um, we believe... Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is the, the clip from Curse of Monkey Island. Oh. You pull down a Murphy bed and there's yeah. a guy in there. He's a skeleton. Okay. And he's just been there the whole time. So that's the reference. But there was another clip. I wonder if John will also have it. Was we there? can look at it. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. John's right. I have slept on a fold down bed once said well in an Airbnb I was staying yeah. in and I spent the whole night worrying it was going <laughs> to just fold down and <laughs> imprison me there forever. <laughs> and everyone would be like, where's Andy? Well, I guess we should just leave. He probably went ahead. And I'd be thinking, no, I'm trapped. Help, I'm trapped. In but the, obviously the mattress is <laughs> I'm not help. muffled, yeah. Help, I'm trapped in the bed. And then that's like the Airbnb wouldn't be rented out for another six months and then they'd find my... And then the my next guest would come and pull it down and your... My dead skeleton. Yeah, your come skeleton out. would come up. And that's it. That's the end of it. Thanks for that great VT there, great John. Great VT. I think that's probably, that's probably what I had in the back of my mind 
when I was thinking That's about... That's why you're scared of Murphy beds, because you played, I Monkey, played Island, Monkey Island a whole bunch. And you, you couldn't forget about that skeleton. Yeah, it kind of works out for the skeleton, though, because later on you remove the boards on the wall and you can launch him into a crypt and he's alive and he gets married to a ghost bride. So, so you really should have factored that into your fear about Murphy beds. Yeah, because actually it worked out fine for that. There you skeleton. go. No, we, well, I feel like we've made some progress here today on the therapy couch. Yeah. So maybe no, I like we've cured Andy's fear, of, fear of, 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 Murphy, of Murphy Next time Murphy I sleep oh, wait, wait, wait. in a Murphy so, bed. But, but presumably your fear of Murphy beds. And the reason we were talking about Murphy beds, to be clear, is because they added them to The Sims Finally. 4 in the Tiny Living DLC. Um, because, you know, you have Murphy beds when you don't have the space for a bed and a sofa. Mm -hmm. Now, why are you actually, let's dig into this, into let's, your psyche. I don't think we have time <laughs> to dig into my psyche. No, but do have, have people actually died of Murphy beds and is that where that comes from? I don't know, you'd assume. That's what, I mean. Why, why wouldn't it go up in the night and suffocate you? But I feel like there must be safety features, like programmed in. Programmed designed in. Designed in, all right, designed not in. Not computer. <laughs> A computerized right. Murphy bed. It feels like you would design a Murphy bed to not be able to kill people. You need a spring powerful enough to lift a human body. <laughs> to, to snap a human to spine. Snap it, yeah. But so it mercifully kills I'm not saying you it's it... a rational fear, Jane. Okay, fine. That's the point of irrational fears. They're irrational. Uh, okay, fine. Also, as a, at a young age, I played The Curse of Monkey Island, which prominently oh. featured a human skeleton <laughs> in a Murphy bed. It's not hard. It's not, oh, no. You don't need a degree oh. from psychiatrist, university, oh. Dr. Fraser Crane, you. My parents were murdered by a Murphy bed. Yeah, that too. A <laughs> Murphy bed fell on them. It's a Batman scenario, but with a Murphy bed. Yeah, they left the theatre in a Murphy bed, <laughs> chomped up. My mum and her pearls oh. went everywhere. Okay. And then I became... And the pearl symbolised your family. Yeah. Broken by an act of cruelty. And, yeah, yeah, and then I saw it. I fell into a cave and saw a YouTuber. <laughs> and I became a YouTuber. Is that his origin story? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fell finally. Into a, fell into a cave that was full finally. of poor brothers. <laughs> Okay, so, I'm lost. What are we? What are we doing? Uh, What's I think happening? That's, that's it for the comments. Was so, that the whole comments thing? Yeah, we've done. We've done oh, many well. comments. We talked about Richard Garriott. Oh, okay. We talked about. Um, well, in that case, I think we'll play us out with a clip. Yeah. Or maybe roll VT. We're gonna roll. Yeah, roll into some, Ooh, some stuff. I'm, oh, all right, Ooh, punish, punish. No, wait, wait, wait. There's spanking. the spanking. spanking. There it is. I knew I didn't dream it. There was spanking in this game. Of course. Of course. Well, well we, now you've seen We got what we came for. The spanking. Yeah, there you go. That's it from Show of the Week Live, everybody. Thank you for watching. Yes, but as we are live, we can do a like spike instead of asking you to press the like button. We can do it live, and then we can see if you've actually pressed the like button. Yeah, we'll know. I'll know. Yeah, there's even more of a reason to press it if you ask me. So, three, two, one. Everybody press the like button. Like spike. There it is. Thank you. There it is. Thank Appreciate you, everyone. It. Thanks for watching. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, Hello! It's the post bit. It's the after show party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, you're all If you already tuned out, then, then more two, for you. Two bad friends, we're still here. We're going to go all night. We're going to wrap this up, but yeah. just if there are oh, any okay. final final comments. Yeah. Uh, Emma Allison says you're making a sick, pay, sick day payday worthwhile. Thanks for the good sick time. Sick day payday. Sick day payday. Sick best kind of payday. payday. <laughs> um, Is me. it? Yeah, because you can just like stay at home and enjoy your Should money. Be the best kind of payday. A healthy when day payday. <laughs> physically healthy. No, <laughs> no, it's the one where you don't have to go to work. Right. Okay, um, fine. Jelly Greco says, so if this works out well, how about a live stream ox venture? Could happen. <gasps> Ooh. Could no, happen. Yeah. Interesting. Ooh. Has never happened. But Could happen. We do we live would, shows. We yeah. could potentially do live streams. We would be able to cut out all the bits where we don't know how the rules work. Yeah, we can't oh, do that no, on a live true. stage show. I mean, there'd be hardly finally, any show left. <laughs> when we're finally actually good at D&D, then we'll live stream it. Yeah, in 2077. If, if you know a, a good D&D teacher, like a coach, mm. send Charlie's them a good our D &D way. Coach. He is. No, that's true. He, he is. is. Good. But he I is. can't put that on him. He does, he does so much for us. He can't also teach, <laughs> teach us the us rules. Also, well, if you could play as Egbert, that would be really handy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stand at the back <laughs> nodding. Uh, we do have a new D and D episode coming up soon. Oh my goodness! Yes. Oh, yeah. good, good secret for the first, yeah, for, for the end around. of the first. Juicy Ox Venture secrets. Uh, and also, we also, we tried really hard to get the rules right this time. We did. So, so we hard. really tried. I had little cards yeah. and everything. Yeah. Spell so, cards. Yeah. yeah. Doing my best. So yeah, there's new Ox Venture on the way. Actual, not live, but pre-recorded Ox Venture mm -hmm. with the little animation bits. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin Gusling says, "Happy to see you guys live stream while I'm sick. Have a good week, guys." Uh, get well soon to all of the people who are ill and hope we've kept you entertained. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little uh, sticker from David Storiti. Oh, uh, cool. That's great. Oh, Annika Brock says... Stickers? Great. Yeah, they're amazing. Look. 
That's a little exclusive one that we've got. Oh, we got from yeah. the Snowit thing. Uh, and Anna Kabok says, this was such a fun format, hope it sticks, assuming it's not too stressful. Not that stressful, I don't Yeah, think. it wasn't stressful for us. <laughs> we said easily, John while is... John sweats in the background. John is... Yeah, John's face John's down. Giving us the thumbs up, it's gone fine. <laughs> I mean, his thumb is up, but he's face down yeah. on the floor. So. Um, fine. Uh, oh, it's about to get more stressful because Imeo Jen says, I love Jane's earrings, they look both beautiful and low key haunted. Mm. Oh, oh what? yeah. They each contain the soul of, uh, of an ancestor mm. of mine. Of yeah. a jilted suitor. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, and Craig B says, just got a raise at work, so have a pint on me. Love the live show of the week. Thank you ah, so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this yeah. brave experiment. Yeah, really do fun. let us know in the comments how you think it went. This was fun. Yeah. And obviously it will be available as a video on demand. So, so you, can you can just watch, watch just like a regular show. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. yeah, maybe we can like top and tail it so there's none of the kind of like waiting around at the beginning. Yep. Um, we'll and we'll, we'll kind of trim it down, present it nicely, mm -hmm. and put the card in of the of the clip that Andy was referring to. I like the bit where I ran and got a soda, and then you could hear good. it. But that someone in the comments was like, <laughs> "I heard the." Kss when yeah. the soda opened. Uh, that's how you That know. soda was absolutely required. Mm. It's Thank getting you. warm in here. We turned the aircon off because mm. it's a bit noisy. And I think so the only issue was an the hour lack of the long. Hideki Kamiya clip. But well, you can imagine what it was. It was Hideki Kamiya in the office. Fighting a monster, yeah. It's easy to imagine. He headbutts it in the face. That's good. Should, Is it as good as Harada's flying headbutt on Yosh Yoshinori Ono? A clip we also don't have that you'll have to imagine. It's similar. Right. You can't just make, you can't just reference clips. Let me pick a yeah. picture, not, Jay. I'm like, let there. me spin you a yarn. The only issue was that we didn't play that clip. Am I like, oh, you know what? I thought I'd add a, 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 add a second issue. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's you two issues. You know what's good? Two Interstellar. Issues. Uh, you know, that three hour movie. The full movie, movie Interstellar. Yeah, yeah, let's watch it now. <laughs> Picture in picture, we'll just watch Interstellar. We um, open on Matthew McConaughey in a cornfield. Let's describe it, yeah. His daughter is there. Um, live streaming, we're, we're trying to do more live streaming yeah. generally, actually. We're, we're getting set up to do more solo live streams. Mm -hmm. So I know I, I did a control one a yep. while back and you, you're you planning on doing one next week. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Maybe, we'll I, see. I'm not sure I can talk about what it is. Mm. Yet, okay. But uh, Monday okay, uh, for cool. another another Sunday live And that's yeah. So expect more streaming from us generally. Yeah, and yeah. let us know Mark's if you're watching this as a vi uh, video on demand later. Let us know in the comments what you think about that as well, and how, <laughs> whether you've enjoyed that as well. Yeah. So, uh, so thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Mm. I'm going to be at CTV2 this weekend. And say you're hi. In Chicago. If you're in Chicago, yeah. Say hi. Yeah. See you there. All right. um, but until then. We'll, we'll Let's meet you. back here. Sorry. Yeah, next week. On Wednesday. Let's try this again. Yeah. Next week. All right. Sounds good. All right, now bye for real this bye time. For bye for real. There will be no after after show yeah, party. Yeah, that's it. Bye. Right, bye. <laughs>